Hi everybody, it's Agnes. I've got another interview today. It's with Lanisa today. Hello, Lanisa. Hello, Agnes. <laughs> How are you? Very well. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and say where you are? I can definitely do that. Um, my name is Lanisa Williams and I am in the wonderful city right now of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I used to not to like to claim that was now home, but I am very proud. I, I believe God puts you where he's supposed to put you. But yeah, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, you and I have had a bit of contact over the last Ooh. six months or so. Yes, yes. And we knew that you would be back with a good story and then we had contact saying you were ready. So I'm more than willing for you to just share whatever you would like to share because you know about manifesting, you know, well, you know the law of yeah. level, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to hand it over to you and you start wherever you want to start. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, guys, I have truly lived a life, and I didn't even know it was I was manifesting. I didn't know I was doing it. But I've lived a life that most people would dream about. And when I initially um, reached out to Inez, I said, listen, I need your help. And I said, and I know this is going to sound crazy. What I do in my life, my profession is a self-love coach. I teach people how to love themselves. I said, but now I'm at a part of my life that I realized I really need somebody to help me remember how to love me. And um, it was hard. And so when I started on Yance, was like, Lenisa, just tell me about your past. And I'm like, well, it's not a lot, but just let me, yeah, let me just kind of tell you some stuff. And the more I started telling her, she was like, do you realize how, I mean, how much energy you have that you have met, you know, manifested all these things throughout your life? And he said, I, I just want to go ahead and interview you now. I mean, can we just talk about it? And I'm like, no, because I felt like um, I was at the lowest point in my life. I really did. And so I couldn't see that being a true example of manifesting. So let me, let me start there. Um, growing up as a little child, I was, I, I unfortunately had some incidents in my life that bruised me. One, um, at the age of five, I was burned. Um, I was poured hot grease on me. So immediately that gave me an um, image of that you're not beautiful, that you're ugly. I remember the kids looking at me like I was deformed. Um, I was a tomboy on top of that. So I felt like I was a little boy. So low self-esteem, low image. And um, I did have the ability, I had a lot of love around me, you know, my mom and my stepfather and everyone, they poured into me. However, I don't want to talk about dysfunctional families, but you guys know what I'm saying. It, you know, it can look pretty on the outside, but on the inside, it's got some crazy that's going on. So with the combination of all of that made me feel that in life, I always had to prove who I was, my self-worthiness. And so to do that, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go out and I'm going to say that I want to be, I'm, I, I want to be president of my student body council. And guess what? I became president of my student body council. Now, the interesting thing here was that, Agnes, is that um, it was a pretty much a, um, a predominantly white school. And here I was, this little black girl becoming student body president and people were like who is this person that just pops up here in Tennessee <laughs> and becomes student body president so that was the beginning of my first true you know manifesting and I didn't know all I said this is what I'm going to do the next one after I, I became a cheerleader in college um once again the first pretty much the first black cheerleader at my college but I said this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it then I said, you know what? I want to Lisa, be a flight attendant. Can you, yeah. can you give us a, what, what um, era are we talking about? So oh, okay. Oh, great. And, and yeah. you know what? I'm actually excited to talk about this <laughs> because in seven days, guys, just seven days, I will be 50 years old. Um, so yeah, yeah. so, uh, you know, I don't mind dating myself because I'm, I'm looking forward to the big 50, but this yeah. was in the, um, this was in the eighties, in, in the, the early eighties. Okay. Yes. Yep. 
Yep. And so here I am saying this is what I was going to be. I was going to be a flight attendant. So I came out and guess what? Not one flight. Um, I didn't get one offer. I got two offers. Beautiful. And I'm just getting all these things. But here's the sad thing about this. The more I achieved, I guess I was still unhappy. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't figure out what it was, but I knew I had to achieve because it was the titles. It was me. You know, I was always that person. I had to go after the fine man. You know, he had to be, he had to be the looker, but that made me feel validated. It made me feel worthy. So everyone around me always looked at me as girl, you never want or need for anything. I mean, you always get what you want. And basically I did. I, you know, after that, I, I manifested my husband and got him. And then, you know, we were at the bottom of the barrel, literally living at the bottom of the barrel, manifest this wonderful job. Um, I, in 18 months time, I was averaging 40 to $80,000 per month. And, I, and what I mean per month, yes. So I was living a lifestyle that most people dreamed of. But again, I was so unhappy. But I would get the fulfillment with the titles and everything. So, Kent, let me bring you forward to you. Um, because of all the things that I've done, and I've written a couple of books, and I just published my other book, and I started a um, a, um, a company back in 2012. I was doing my coaching, and um, I moved to Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't plan to move to Memphis. I come from Los Angeles, Redondo Beach. And I have twin daughters that went to the University of Memphis, and they both graduated, both said, you know what, you know, we're going to stay here in the local area. And one got married and was having my first grandchild. And so I thought I was going to pop in for two months and then pop right on out. Well, two months, now it's going on five years. I've been here. <laughs> but because I didn't have a foundation as to um, a foundation of clients that really knew who I was. I mean, everybody kind of knew me on the West Coast, and that's where I got my coaching business up and running. No one knew me here. Mm. So I jumped back into corporate America. Mm. And again, because I, I have to, you know, feel worthy, of course, I had to go after the job that had the quote unquote title mm. that brought in the big money, making quarter of a million dollars a year. You know, I just, that was everything that showed me who I was. Well, I don't want to bore everyone, but you know the story. Um, my first year, got this great job, was everything going on. Immediately, they said, Lanisa, we want to make an infomercial off with you in it. Um, actually, that infomercial is still running now. Um, so they flew me out to out in the West Coast to make this information, um, this, this video on a Wednesday had gotten promoted to the top of the ladder as a trainer to travel and train people. On Friday, they fired me. Mm. And I was like, what in the world has just happened? And the crazy thing was I really kind of got caught up in the politics of the office, unfortunately. And so what corporate wanted to do was just wipe out the whole staff. And mm. so I was a part of that. But here I is again. Because I don't know that I'm really manifest. All I know is that I need titles to validate me. I need to feel that's the only way I feel worthy. Yes. Three days before that, I had another company had called me out of the blue to say, you know what, Lanisa, we want you to come. We want to fly you to West Palm Beach to um, go on an interview. And I'm like, no, I'm in a great place now. You know, I, I'm not really trying. And so a friend of mine said, Lanisa, what the heck? Why not go? So. On when I had come back from the um, videotaping, doing the infomercial on a Wednesday, I got back here in, in Memphis on Thursday. Right when I got off the plane, they put me on another plane to find me out to West Palm Beach. Okay, do the interview in West Palm Beach. Really, and I really kept telling them, I really don't want the job. I, I'm happy where I am, but you know, I'm here because you know, I'm I'm, I'm just going to be here. <laughs> Friday. Without me knowing, remember, I get fired at four o'clock. By six o'clock, this other company is calling me, hiring me. So I got wow. fired and hired in the same day. Okay? Wow. That's incredible. So, I know. That's incredible. <laughs> and, but still not really understanding. I mean, I get it, but I'm not getting it because I'm really, remember, my mode of operation was making me feel worthy. Yeah. I had to make the money. And so here I am within this other job. 
working and immediately probably like three or four months in, I knew that wasn't the company for me. So I said, you know what? All right, I need another job. Bring me, I, I don't know what it is. I need another job. And lo and behold, I had this headhunter call me and said, listen, we see your resume on LinkedIn. How would you love to come work for us? And I'm like, well, what do you do? Well, you were great at putting hair off, taking hair off. Can you come put hair on? I won't talk about the name of the company, but okay. so I get hired. They, I go to the interview and they hire me right out the gate. And it was like a perfect setup because it allowed me the flexibility of kind of traveling. And I love to travel. Yeah. So I turn in my recognition, um, resignation to this other company. And um, I'm going to figure long, out how deep. How long were you at that company? I was at that company probably about four months because okay. I knew from the beginning it was just not going to work for me. Yep. Yep. And so I immediately said, you know what? Hey, um, I, I, so when I turned my resignation in and I'm trying to think how deep because I don't want to be putting names out there because, but anyway, I had someone approach me that owns their own company, a successful, yeah, they just own their own company. I'll say it like that. So they approached me and they said, you know what, Lenisa, we really need you. We, um, would, you, would you reconsider coming to work for us? I turned it down. Well, then they came back on and put on the table. Not only will we get, increase your salary, we're going to make you a part of the company. We're going to do this and give me this big title. And, and so I called a dear friend of mine. She's like, Lenisa, how can you turn that down? And I'm like, well, I guess I can so here I am. I tell the other company I can't come work for them. Now I go work for this private company. And still in the same city? It's still in the same city. Okay. Still in the same city. <clears throat> I'm doing great. I'm traveling. I come home after doing a stint in Texas because I was all out the whole week I had to be in Texas. And this was a Sunday afternoon. I'll never forget. I was in my room. <laughs> and here I am. And my phone rings and the person calls. Well, how did it go, Lenise? So I said, Great. Da, 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 da. He goes, Well, I hate to tell you this, but I think me and my wife were a little overzealous. We can't afford you. So today is your final day. Anya, I literally, this is the first time in my life that I just cried. Yeah. I cried. I was like, you have to be kidding me. Mm. You know I just turned down a great position to come work for you. Mm. And then I tried to get my composure. And I literally went for like three to four weeks. Um, and I, didn't, and I stayed at home. I didn't tell my children. And yeah. they knew I worked from home, so they didn't ask. But finally, after my money started running really short, yeah. I had to tell someone. So they helped me. But within four months, within four months, here, here I go. I said, I need, I need a great position. Headhunter calls. We've got this great territory manager, pharmaceutical sales, da 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 I'm like, really? Get hired on the spot. I'm at the top of the company. I've been at the top of the company for two years. In October, um, I was challenged and I was told that my numbers, even though I was at the top of the company, they told me that my numbers weren't where it should be. And I said, oh, okay. Well, um, okay, well, well, let me go and, and, you know, let me just change some things that I did. So, you know, in that industry, we go out and we whine and dine the positions. Yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah. Well, Legally, you're not supposed to. We do it. I mean, reps do it, but we're not supposed to. Yeah. Well, another rep saw that I had done something nice and took a picture oh. and sent it to my company, and I was fired on the spot again. Yeah. So here in the last four years, every year I've been fired. And finally, I said, what am I doing wrong? Mm. God, what am I doing wrong? And typically I can fix it. And remember, I, all my life I've been validated by either a job, yeah. my title, or a man. And this time I had none of those. I had none of those. And it was as if God was saying, Lenisa, I need to strip you so that you can really understand where true happiness and peace comes from anyway. And I remember just like, God, you've got to help me with this. So I kind of threw myself because I the quickest thing to make me feel good was to go find another man. Okay. <laughs> yes. And so I found another man. And lo and behold, you know, it didn't last. 
It didn't last because I was unhappy. But I am so glad that happened to me because at that point, I really broke. That's when I really broke. Mm. And typically, how does everybody find you? We find you because we're trying to get that specific person back. And so I'm on, I'm just Googling everywhere. How do I get this man back? What am I doing? Because I was at the bottom. Remember, that's, I'm a junkie for titles. And, you know, this is where all my self-worth is. So I'm sitting here and I'm Googling you and I'm just, and, I'm, and I find you pop up. And I listen to it and I'm like, okay, I know this. I know this is what I teach my people. I know this. <laughs> I, I, okay. But I couldn't stop listening to you. I'm like, I know this. And then you said something at the end of one of them. And I don't know if you were given, it was a question or answer or a comment to a, I can't remember. But yeah. all I remember you saying was, you brought up Neville, which I had never heard of Neville, which is, yeah. I'm so glad. But then you said, everybody is you pushed out. Mm. And I said, huh? What? Everybody's me pushed out. And then you went from talking about relationships. If someone is cheating on you or you're always, um, someone is not there for you or you feel like you, um, they're cheating on you or they leave you. What in you is saying that you're not worthy? What in you is saying that you're not respected or that you're first best? Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I start looking at everything. And then you kept pointing back to, if you really want to get to the balance, you have to have self-love. Mm. You have to have self-love. And I think that's when I broke. Because all these years, and I mean all these years, I've really been going at this self-love thing and manifesting, I mean, since the early 80s, not understanding what I was doing, um, really got into the field of coaching in, in the early, um, mid-2000s yeah. um, and started my job, on my, on my counseling thing in 2012. I really thought that I knew what self-love was. Yeah. But for the first time, you helped me understand. I didn't understand it. I've been teaching a principle that I haven't really been walking in. Mm. And so that's when I was determined. I don't know. I just said, I don't know how I'm going to reach this lady. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but this coach need another coach. I need somebody to put me back on track. So can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, yeah. Just looking at the job stuff that you've you've gone through. I've I got four amazing jobs and then I got fired from each one. Knowing now everyone's you pushed out and knowing that your beliefs create, what belief do you think you had that dismantled and got you fired each time? Um, that I wasn't enough. Okay. That I'm never enough. Yeah. I'm no never chosen. Do, no matter what I do. I'm never enough. Yeah. Um, it's, and oh, yeah. 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 And that comes from? That comes from my past. Yeah. From children. Yes. Um, being at, you know, I grew up a military child. Okay. And um, it was a product of my, my parents. My, my mother and father got divorced. Yep. And, you know, I was separated at a very young age, at the age of two. Yeah. And I think my mom married my stepfather at four. And, my, you know, all I can say, and I don't want to put it out there like this, my stepfather loved me the way he knew how to love me. I'm mm. learning that, you know. Mm. I used to point the fingers and be like, oh, you, you know, I hate, you know, I hate how I was right. But I'm so, I'm, I, it made me the person that I am now. Yeah. But because of that, I've been begging for it. I was always begging for the attention oh, yeah. and, and I would always be pushed back. Now my mother, because she was one of those people that was, you know, she wanted me to see the cultures and everything. So I've lived all over the world. We've traveled the world. And her thing to me was, Lenisa, you can be and have and do everything. Mm -hmm. So on that surface, she tried to push me out there. And, and then I did, I went out there, but to me, I felt like I was never enough. Yeah. It seemed like I would always get so close yeah. and then it would be taken away. Yes. Or I just, so yeah. through times, you know, and that's why I, and that's, and also my mom's and, and how I was raised. Remember it was, it was always, you gotta be the best. 
So that's where I look, you know, I had to have the most money. I had to have the best man. I ha and if I didn't have that, that meant something was wrong with me. Yeah. You know, you can't just love Lenisa. Yeah. You have to know everything about Lenisa first. Yeah. You got to know that I'm this. That's a lot of pressure. When you're, when you're young, when you're young. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, in October, I just had a break. I mean, it was just a, a emotional breakdown and that's just yeah. really what it was. Um, yeah. is that um, when we had contact? Yes. That well, that's when I, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, no, 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 no. We contacted, I think I contacted you. When did I contact you? Cause I didn't contact you right away. Um, Cause I think I went to a therapist first, to be honest okay. with you. Yep. I was like, okay, yeah. something's got to change. I went there. I think the beginning of the year is when I contacted you. Okay. It had to be like in January. February, about six so. months ago. Yeah. About six months. Yeah. 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 It's about okay. six months. You're exactly right. So, um, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> but lo and behold, I contacted you yeah. and it was the first time that I knew I needed to get back. I needed to love me. Yeah. I really did. And because I didn't, even though I thought I was, because I remember telling you everything. Yes. And you were like, Lanisa, yeah. do you, can I interview? I mean, you really do manifest a lot of stuff. And I was you like, um, yes, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't yeah. feel that way. Yeah. I said, I hear what you're saying, but mm. yeah, I know people from the outside look at my life like it's been wonderful, but Mm. I need to get a hand on this. And you were like, okay, well, you're doing the best thing. Cause I was telling you about how I was listening to you every day and meditating yeah. now and putting me first and, you know, and yeah. just really I'm becoming a student mm. of an industry that I've promoted for a long time. Yeah. And I tell you, and that's why I'm on right now, girl, I so love and appreciate you. I so love and appreciate you. Cause I've sent, so many people your way. And when I tell you, because you help me and I just, you know, I, you, you know, I'm a spiritual person and I love the Lord. You help me find me again. Mm. I don't want to cry, but That's you right. did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's real. It's real. I've been pricked. I've been walking this world and this life. And finally, at the age of 50, I know how to love me. Yeah. I really know what that looks like. And when I, you know, really got into it and listening to your tapes and, and us doing our one-on-one, -on -one, you know, the coaching session. Yeah. I said, I'm first. I'm putting yeah. me first. Yeah. I don't need a title. I don't need the money. I don't need a man. I wake up every day knowing that I am the worthy. I'm the shit. I'm the bomb dingy about everything. <laughs> and I may have two cents in my bank account, but I know I'm the wealthiest woman in this world. I really feel that way. I feel like, you know, I don't need someone to tell me I'm beautiful. I believe I'm beautiful now. I didn't, yes. you know, I don't need you to validate me. Yes. And I think through life I've been waiting and waiting on people mm -hmm. to validate me in so many different areas. Yes. And I think it had to happen. And I'm so God, glad that God allowed all that to happen because where he's taken me now, I couldn't just talk about it. I had to really be about it. Mm. And that's how you can coach us authentically because you've walked that walk and you, it's not just something you, you know, there are a lot of people out there and you know, I love our industry and I love what we do, yes. but a lot of people do textbook stuff and yes. let me just give you theory stuff or they're doing it because of the money. Yeah. When you live it and you understand it and it's yeah. happened to you and you think, Oh, it's a different type of, um, yes. understanding. It is. It's in the and, marrow of your bones. Oh, it is. Yeah. And so you, um, through the grace of God, he led me to you and put it, put me back to just waking up every day with a peace that passes all understanding. Mm. And, I, and I really mean that a peace 
that passes all understanding. So with that said, let me tell you some things that I have manifested because of the peace that passes. And I mean, it's like crazy because I was such a doer. I was such going to make stuff happen. Yes. I don't make anything happen. It, I am just allowed. It's like, yeah. I almost sometimes get upset with myself because I'm like, yeah. okay, let me just sit back. Let me see what's going to happen today. Yeah. You know, I just like, let me love me first. Yeah. And in doing that, yeah. the first thing that came about, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get in order. I'm going to try to see how I can do it in order. <laughs> first thing that came about was, I told you I'd started a company and you knew about my company yes. called the Bella Body that I did and the Lord gave it to me in 2012 and that's kind of yeah. how people know me. Yeah. And it's based off of really, you know, this weight loss industry is, well, let me start back from how the company started very quickly. And um, I, with, with, I told you, as everyone knows, I was, my mother was my pillar. She was the one that told me I could be and do everything. Walk. Yeah. She had, had me thinking I can walk on water. Is she, because still, I thought, is she still alive? No, that's, uh -huh. what, that's what my turning point was. Yeah. Um, my mother, and I thought my mother was invincible. My mother had her PhD in education. She had a real estate license. Wow. She, had, she had her construction license, owned her own construction company, wow. owned a restaurant, and even did a little Amway multi-level marketing on the side. I mean, my mother was a straight up hustler. But in 2001, I was with her at, um, on February the 12th, I was with her at 8, 8, um, 8 p.m. Yeah. By 1 a.m. in the morning, she had passed at 56. Wow. 56 years young. My little brother called me and, um, yeah. yeah. And you know, that was a wake up call for me. And what I realized, my mother was very, very proactive when it came to making a title, making a name da 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 da, da in this yeah. world. Yeah. But very reactive when it came to her health. Mm. And I knew I was growing up just like her. And so because I was kind of an athlete, I said, you know what, I'm going to get on a diet. So I start getting, you know, the grapefruit diets, the cookie diet, the Atkins diet. I mean, I just did them all. And did I lose weight? Yeah, I did. But I gained it all back. Mm. And then I said, well, maybe I'm not exercising enough. So then I start working out three or four times a day. And wow. um, was I losing the weight? Yeah, I was. But I was a junkie in the, you know, who really keeps mm. exercising three or four times a day. Yeah. So I would gain the weight again. And it was just one day I was sitting on my bed and I'm like, Lord, what am I missing? Mm. I mean, really, what am I missing? And he said, Lanisa, bottom line, you're trying to fight something with physical tools that you need to use a spiritual tool mm. for. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. And so my only foundation is to go back to the word. So I went to Galatians 5 and I start looking up the, um, the manifestations of the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. And there's nine fruits of the spirits. And, um, and I start looking at him. It's like, why does he talk about having peace and, and love and goodness and long suffering and kindness and joy? What does that really mean? Mm. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to take a week to break this down. And I'm going to tell you the first week I started with goodness because I knew I needed to feel good about me. Yeah. I knew I didn't know me. So I said, you know what? I need to have a rebirth. I need to know who Lenisa is again, you know? So I started changing my mind. And the more each week, the more I did it, the more my mind would change. And the byproduct was by week, about week six or seven, I started asking people asking me, Lenisa, what are you doing? What kind of exercise program are you on? What? And I'm like, I'm not on an exercise program. Matter of fact, I, I stopped exercising. I stopped dieting. I just start focusing. Yeah. And yes, by the end of my nine weeks, I had literally gone from a size 12 to a size four. Gee. That's when I realized, I said, oh, I get it. It's a mindset. Where the mind goes, the mm. body has to follow. Yeah. It just has to. Yeah. So from there, I had some of my clients asking me, Lenisa, can you tell us what you did? And so hence, the Bella Body <laughs> nine-week program, coaching program came Lovely. in existence. Lovely. So that's what I did. Well, I have put that on the burner since I've come back to when I got to Memphis. I didn't even 
you know, I have people calling me, Lanisa, do you do your private coaching with the Bella Body? Da, 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 da. Yep. So what, Let me, what era is the book from? So I got it on the timeline. Um, they started in 2012, 2012, okay, so not that long okay. ago, not yes. that long ago, six years ago. Yep. Six years ago. Well, here I am broken down, da, 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 da. Mm. beginning of February, I had, um, and you know, this is when I'm starting to love me. I had totally forgotten and I really did. I had done a private coaching, um, for a group of women a year ago and it was being videotaped. The videographer, he's been editing it all this time. On February, he calls me. He says, Lanisa, I've got a gift for you. And I'm like, a gift for me? What are you talking about? He said, don't you remember you videotape these, um, your sessions? I'm ready to give it to you. I'm like, you are? Um, yes, when I tell you, the nine-week series now is not just me having to te talk to you. It's now on a platform where people can automatically sign up for the program and learn the system from the comfort of their home. Yeah. I, I mean, it was one of those things. I dreamed about it, but I didn't know how to do it. And I tell you, at a time in my life where money is not, it wasn't flowing abundantly, and for this to come in, mm. I was like, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So that was the first thing I manifested that I was like, okay, I love this. I love this. Okay. And I love teaching and coaching. So the yeah. Bella body program, losing weight, all that, that's been great. Then the second thing is I've been writing on this book since 2008. Yeah. But I had a fear of sharing it, to be honest with you, mm. because it shows a lot of the pain that I've gone through yeah. and it was exposing me. I'm quote unquote, a self love person. But if you read my book, you're going to be like, Oh, I don't know if you loved yourself too much. Or how, how are you getting over this? Yes. Well, so I could never complete it because I felt like I wasn't authentic. I was mm -hmm. sharing and giving, um, tools on how to love you but I didn't feel like I was really walking in it. Yes. Well, since all this transformation and me learning to really love me, I was able to complete my book uh, called you. The Eulogy. Beautiful. Okay? We will put all the links to this down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the eulogy with that, um, it really is teaching individuals and I can, I'm proud to say it now because you helped me just like, okay, I got this really loving themselves, eliminating yeah. the pain. So the book is based on taking pain and putting it in a way that you can eulogize it, celebrate it, mm. celebrate it to a point that it benefits you. Yeah. So after each chapter, the people, um, individuals are given, and it's, it's for women, it's geared at women, but I do have men buying it now too. They're saying it's blessing them. Yeah. But I, I, I love the fact I'm, I'm, because of everything that I've gone through, usually I would have just written a book and wouldn't make you apply some steps. Because of everything that I've gone through now, I'm like, no, it has to be, they've got to do something after each chapter. They yeah. can't, you can't just read this yeah. and take my story and hear it. You need to apply it because if yes. you don't apply it, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to free your mind. It's yep. not going to get you to a place of self-love. Stop looking at somebody else. Work on you. When you yes. work on you, everything else is going to change. Yeah. So that was the second thing. The third thing. Okay, here I am. I'm working from home. No job. I didn't go back to corporate America. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not yep. going to do this. I'm going to stay true to myself. I know where my heart is. Yeah. Why did I, I was at a car, I was referring some people to a friend of mine that works at a car dealership and he was like, um, I, he, I didn't know that when you refer somebody that they will, he, there was a referral fee. So he said, well, needs to come pick up your referral fee. And I'm like, for what? He said, well, they bought a car, you come get a check. So I'll go there and I'm picking up this check. And at the time I, um, I had a 370 Z which I love my little convertible 370Z and I, you know, I had fun in it. And so he's walking me to the car and he goes, so when you're going to trade, when, when can we trade your car? I'm like, we can't trade my car. He goes, yeah, yes, we can. I said, no. I said, 
first of all, I don't have a job yeah. and I'm not working for, I'm working for myself now. And no, well, and he said, well, what about, I said, listen, I don't have the down payment. I'm not trying to get a job. I, I, I'm doing good to pay my note every month, but I'm happy about it. And I'm watching my income. And he goes, can you just trust me on this? I'm like, okay. Well, the next day he calls, he says, can you come back down to the office? I'm like, for what? He says, if you can just trust me, I'm going to show you something. When we got down there, he says, I've got a car that I know you're going to love. Just trust me on it. But you need $500 to put down. I said, $500? I'm like, that's gonna, that was, this is my car note that I'm going to pay. He said, just trust me, Lanisa. Just trust me. So I give this man $500. I signed some forms blindly. A week later, he calls. He says, your car is here. I get there, Agnes. It is a 2015 car, um, Audi yeah. convertible. Yeah. 25,000 miles on it. Wow. Same color as my old car, but an upgrade. Yes. An, and interest rate in half from what I was paying, payment in half from what I was paying, and I had 45 days that I have to make my next payment. I'm like, are you kidding me? He said, I knew you would like this. Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, wow. it was like, what? So it was just, and the funny thing, maybe two weeks ago, my son was at the house. He was from college. And he said, Mom, I'm seeing all these Audis. Are you supposed to get an Audi? And I was like, boy, please. I'm not getting a car right now. And two weeks later, here I am riding around in my 2015 convertible Audi, eights, a sports. I mean, I'm just like, are you kidding me? Lord, I mean, is this like all happening? Yeah. And then the last part, I got to go back to a specific person. Okay. Because that's initially what I called, what I reached out to you about. <laughs> Let me just say this. We all better be careful of really what you pray for, or what you think you want. Because when you really, because really it, everything is you pushed out. Yep. Because, okay, so when I'm now at this peace of love, happiness, joy, Lord, I love me, and, you know, I don't need a man, da, 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 da. Guess who comes back in my life? That specific person that I was just so praying on the knees for, da, 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 da. And he was like, can I take you out? I'm like, I really didn't want to go. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't want to go. And I remember just saying, but when he said, you prayed so much for this. You were just on the thing, just trying to just make this thing happen. And now, six months later, you don't even really want to go out with him. But I forced myself to. I said, yeah. you know what? Let's go out. So I went out on a date with him. And I'll never forget, we're sitting and we're having some Korean food. <laughs> and he's talking to me and he's saying, you know, I could just tell a difference in you. And I said, you know what? I just want to say thank you. And he goes, why? I said, no, thank you. Thank you for showing you, for showing me me. Yeah. You really exposed the person who I was. And yeah. if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been pushed to get better. And I thank you. And I said, us breaking up had nothing to do with you. It had everything to do with me. And he goes, oh, see, this is what I love about you. This is the person I know. This is the person I know. And so we're going to leave. And he's like, well, can I get a kiss? You know, give me a kiss. So I turned my cheek and he was kissing. And he says, no, I mean, like a kiss that we, you know, we had a lot of chemistry. And I said, oh, I'm not that person anymore. <laughs> and he goes, what? I said, no. I'm, you know what? I'm in a good place right now. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? You mean you don't want to date anymore? I'm like, I'm in a good place right now. Yeah. I really am. And not to put a dig on him yeah. because I think, you know, he's a beautiful spirited person, but I, um, I'm just going to say that mm -hmm. we can get so caught up on attracting something that we think we want yep. until we really get healed and know who we are. Yeah. You don't really know what you want until you know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to leave anybody with any message, 
I know we all are on here for that specific person and getting all the money in the world or having this house or having this car. When you finally discover who you are as a person and really take the time to get with Anya's and use her videos, and I'm going to tell you guys, pay the money. Pay the money to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with her. I mean, it's great that you're looking at it and doing from the videos and whatever, but it wasn't until I took the opportunity to say, you know, uh, to say, you know what, it's worth the money. We spend our money on a lot of things, but guess what we don't sometimes spend our money on self-improvement. And when I say yeah. self-improvement, not things like, um, let me go get my nails done or let me go get my hair done. And, you know, yes. and in my, in my culture, shoot, women will spend four or $500 on weaves yeah. in a minute and drop, and then they're depressed at home crying. Are you kidding me? And that's what, even with, you know, and I know, Anya, as you know this, when, you know, my program, um, for my Bella Body program, I have people come up to me all the time and like, Lenisa, can we get this? You know, I want to go through your course. I've heard so many testimonies about you, da, 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 da. Well, how much is it? And I'm like, well, it's $179. That's yeah. it. Oh, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But then the same person will go spend something on some, you know, to... Yeah to buy the best jeans in the world. And you know, we've got to get our priorities right, guys. Let's get our priorities. And you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I feel like something just said. So I want to put this out here. If anybody <laughs> listens to this show today, because I love her, anybody listens to this show today, if you want to get the Bella Body Program, I'm just feeling like I should say this. If you want the Bella Body Program and you feel like you've been struggling, eliminating weight, and you know you've done all you can, and you know you need a mind shift, I want to give it to you. I want to give it to you. Now, I'm not going to give it to you for free, because I believe sometimes where there's no, you don't put a little effort in, you got to have value. So, but what I am willing to do is half price. Mm. So, I'm going to put a discount on yes. The name, the discount is going to be on yes. You have to put the <laughs> discount code in. So, that means you have to listen to this video to get it. So, okay. So, on yes, yes. You have to put her as the discount. And you'll get it for half price. So that's what I want to do to get back because I love you. And yes, you totally helped get me back on track. You really uh, did. And I yeah. thought I was a person that didn't need it. So again, pay the money, guys. I don't care what you charge. <laughs> pay the money. You need this one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's mm -hmm. worth it. It's worth it. Let me say it again. It is worth it. And I think with that, I know I've just been running off at the mouth. No, so. I'm, you're like watching a good TV show. <laughs> <laughs> no it's great to hear the enthusiasm the joy the fun the transformation the results you know Thank because you. you're not talking out of that part of your body which i can't mention otherwise we can't right youtube but right. there is so much humanness and if people will people were going to relate to at least one or two parts of you of your past story you can't do the work like this and not know that stuff yeah because like you yeah. said it otherwise it's just all theory yeah it theory is. anybody it can is. recite theory from your head but it's connecting people with the heart and the emotions because you know they've walked in your shoes and you know right. that they understand it and that's what I think you're really good at is sharing it honestly. You're not going to sugarcoat it because you're doing this kind of work. Oh, no, well, I can't share that because that's going to make me not look glossy. That's, right. what, that's the realness. That's the realness. And I think that's what's really – and, you know, I still remember that session. Do you? I still, and you know I do a lot of them, but I still – there's certain ones, yours in particular, I will never forget it. <laughs> That was the bad suitcase. I really was. But it was so mind blowing. Like from the the lows to the highs were so extreme. Like your highs were off the Richter scale. They really yeah. were. So yeah, yeah. It's harnessing that, isn't it? It's harnessing yes. it. But like you said, if the self love's not underneath it, you can't harness it. You can't. And I realized for, I mean, again, and, and I was like, Lord, why did you make me wait the 50 years mm. to get ready to be 50 to get this? 
but yeah, I have really been walking around with low self-esteem, low yep. self-worth, not feeling special, not feeling enough, yep. not feeling needed or wanted or validated or yep. first best. I mean, yeah. But from the outside, if you yeah. asked anybody, they would be, oh, not Lanisa. That's right. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, we want to be like her. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Do you really want to be? So it's really been, I've been faking all these years. And I hate to say that. Yeah. But. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I was just telling somebody the other day, they were like, Lanisa, you know, are, are you ready for a relationship? And I'm like, man, I am more than ready. I'm like, the person that gets me. <laughs> It's going to get the best version. You thought you knew what he said. Oh, you really got a good, uh, so, you really going to have somebody good now. Lenisa, you know, I'm going to ask this question because they're, <laughs> they're going to ask you in the thread. Of what? <laughs> what's happened with the specific person now that you had that thing? Is it, did you just go, no, thanks very much. No, thanks very much. Wow. I mean, we're cool. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> But you know, yeah, no. not where you're at. What is not the, where I'm at? Is the vibe gone, or you're just your self love's good that you don't need it? My self love is good, but it's like you know how. Let me say the best way to say um, how to how to say this. I think I even heard. Um, I listened to Abraham Hicks too. Yeah. I, I love her that yes. too. Yeah. And I remember someone was asking, was talking about. She was upset, and she says, "You know, I." Um, my, my son really wants to get this girl back and he's, you know, he really da 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 and, you know, how can I help her get him back? Yeah. And Esther was like, you don't want, he, you don't want him to get the girl back? And she was like, why? Why do not, why do not want him to get the girl back? And he says, you're talking about how depressed and unhappy your son is. All he did was a, attract somebody depressed and unhappy. Let him get healed. Yeah. Then happen. Exactly. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah. I was only attracting what I was. Yeah. And you don't see that. You just, and you know, now I really get that. We really, are, it, everything is us pushed out. It really yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, I was just on a conversation earlier and I was talking to a, you know, some, a friend and then someone I'm trying to get to know. We'll see how it goes. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just open and excited now just for whatever comes. And he made a statement to me and I could tell in his statement had a little, a little fear of trust, just a little. It, and I, and I start laughing and he said, what? I said, are you finished? He said, yeah. I said, you know what? I understand why you're saying that. I said, because I said, but I'm not going to look at you, but I'm going to look at me. And I said, I know there's still some parts in me when it comes to relationships that I don't trust. Mm. And I said, so I understand. I said, but well, let me tell you where I am now. I don't have to prove that I'm worthy and I don't have to validate or I don't have to make you trust me because yeah. I know the trust myself. I said, but that also lets me know there's still a little something in me I need to clean up. Yeah. And he was like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> so great when you can catch the everyone as you pushed out in the moment. Oh like that. gosh. And I caught it. Amazing thing. I caught it so quickly. I was like, okay, Lanisa, there, there's still some trust. There's yeah. still a little stuff. You know, you yeah. can, you, you hear everybody saying, oh, Lanisa, you're great. You know, I like you. Oh, you could be a wife. You could be my wife. But yeah. there's something in you saying to you, believe that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because you said you're about to turn 50 and I'm 50. July 9th. July oh, 9th. Really soon. Really soon. <laughs> a week. Yes, yes. <laughs> but you know what I've noticed is, because I'm 51, uh -huh. but there's something that happens, and I don't know if it's an age thing. I don't know, because I won't speak for everybody. I'll just speak for me. But you know how you were talking about just the, the doing, being the action figure, and then you start listening to all this stuff and you're reading and you're absorbing and you're trying to apply it and your self-love improves and you're understanding mm -hmm. everyone's you pushed out and you're living from the end results and you're learning all these techniques. Mm -hmm. Something f along the line when you stop being an action figure and you start to allow, I think that is one of the greatest shifts 
that occurs oh with this stuff because we're so geared to be action figures. I got to do this. I got to make it happen. I got to push it into shape. All of that is just force and control. If you take your hands off and you really listen to letting go, surrender, allowing, talking to God, the God of your understanding, mm -hmm. and becoming someone who is inactive externally but incredibly active internally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something happens where you conserve your energy more and you manifest so much better learning oh that goodness. one thing. That it, you are so on it. So, I mean, direct on it. And there's a link that I want to send you because I love um, individuals to see it. It was Esther was talking, Abraham Hicks. I just saw it two days yeah, ago yeah. and I re-listened to it. But it was a man that came on and he was a corporate guy, um, entrepreneur. And he was like, his problem was, he said, I feel that I have to do to yeah. be successful. Yeah. And he says, she says, I, I have to. So help me understand. You're telling me to allow. Yeah. But in the society says, if I'm not pushing and doing some pushing and making effort to make something happen, yeah. I'm not going to make it work. And so, you yeah. know, Esther goes on and she's, you know, Abraham is talking and she's like, you know, that's unfortunately, that's how we as humans look at it. You think you got to make something happen. Yeah. She said, the best thing that you can do is to be the best you. Yeah. When you're presenting the best you and staying in the, the oh, hold on one second. Can you yeah. see me still? I can okay. see you. Yeah. Okay. When you're being the best you and staying in the right mindset, yep. what's it really going to do is that you're going to attract others yeah. that are in the right mindset. That's really what you need to do if you're staying yeah. in the right feeling. She said, and once you stay and you get in that alignment, Yep. Then you're going to be in the vortex and it's going to bring everything else. Yes. That's the true doing. Yeah. And your and then you are of the car was a perfect example of that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He, Inspired you kept, action. You saying, no, no, no. And the guy's going, yes, yes. You just got to, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. And I can say, no, no. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I didn't even come home and tell my kids because I'm like, this cannot be happening. Yeah. This is really, and, and they didn't, even I got the car, when I got the car, I drove it up and they were like, mom, is that your car? Yeah. Mom, I thought you, I thought you were working for yourself again. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, you will not believe what happened. And I mean, but you're exactly right. Not only that, they call you to say, you've got a check waiting here. And you said, what the heck for? Oh. You've got that happening. And then on top of that, the car. So that's the amazing part of that whole story. You just generously gave a referral to someone who then went on and bought that car. And then that just swung back around. Girl, you hit it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. I love it. That, great. Great example. I exactly. That. And that's what she said. Just be in alignment, be in the place. And that's all yeah. I was. I was generally trying to help a friend out yeah. because I knew she needed help and I knew the finance director. And I said, let me just send her. Yeah. So they you're right. A really important key. If you come from a real, just genuine giving, it goes on giving. Yes, it just yes. goes on giving. It just, it Not does. that you think of that when you do something for a friend like that at the time, you just genuinely go, okay, I know you, I know you, I'm going to put you two together mm -hmm. because it will benefit you both. And mm -hmm. then you took your hands mm -hmm. off and went on and did something else. So yeah. that's such a great example that if you come, and this is what, why I'm bringing this up, the giving is what attracts the open-hearted, mm. generous giving. And that, if you can bring that into your specific person, if you, because a lot of people mm. are trying to take from a specific person. I mm. hear this over and over, and that's the handbrake, mm. is the you're take. Right. And, you know, I'm glad you're saying that. And, and that was one of the uh, aha moments that you helped me see. I remember telling, I think I was talking to my children about it, and I said, you know what, how selfish have I been through the years to, to, to even put a demand on somebody to make them feel like they have to make me feel good? Yes. Yes. That was so selfish of yeah. me that I, you know, that I put that type of pressure yeah. on a man or whatever yes. to validate me. Yes. I should never have done. And so that was kind of like, yeah. that was, those were my moments of, wow. And yeah. You yeah. totally have yeah. missed this mark. Yeah. And you, you can't look that. at that. 
I love how yeah. you said that. You realize the selfishness in that. Yeah. And it's that I had that same moment too, where you just, you're looking at, they're not giving me, they're not giving me, they're not giving me, standing there with your hands on your hips, you know, being all self-righteous about it, right. not even seeing the selfishness in that. And the absolute stopping of any goodness coming to you because yes. you're in that state yep. of selfish. Me, 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 what me. about me? Give me, give me, give me, give me. So it's yep. a great moment That's when it. you realize that and you go, wow, that is just so huge. I'm going to change this and pray that I remember it. Yeah, exactly. That. Exactly. Mm. And that's it. And it is. And I'm glad you said it is a daily walk for me. Yeah. It, it still is. It's yeah. still, um, it's making me become a better coach though. Yes. It really has. Yes. Um, I thank you for that. I, I, I need to be, I need to be having a session with you every <laughs> month, girl. That's for real. For you real, for real. You don't need it. We'll just catch up, but you don't need <laughs> okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it um it's it's made me be aware and take some time mm. you know that was one of the things you said lenny so what are you doing for you every morning yeah. let me tell you what i do for me and i still do it yeah. you know even though and and so you gave me some little yeah. nuggets so I, you know, I would encourage people, don't look at this as a destiny, the destination that you just yes. got to get there. This is a lifetime yeah. journey. Actually, know that you to that, will you share with the viewers what is your daily thing now so that they get an idea? Oh, gosh, yes. I, okay, so literally when I, um, which I'm loving this, I don't use an alarm to wake me up anymore. Yeah, yes. That's that probably is, the best thing. Isn't it? I don't lose, I just wake <laughs> up in peace. And the minute I wake up, I, um, I will hit my, hit my timer because I yes. do 15 minutes of meditation yep. and I lay and I just meditate for that first 15 minutes. That's my first aspect. That's what I'm going to do regardless of where I'm at, how I'll do it. I'm going to get 15 yep. minutes in with me. Yep. After that, I will sometimes pull you up and do a guided meditation. And it depends on how I'm feeling. You know, do I need a little more self-love this morning? Or yeah. do I need a little more wealth? So I'll do a guided with you. Yeah. Through you. Then, I, um, then I'll, I'll pick up my phone. I open up my Bible. I'll get the yeah. Bible text for the day. Nice. Look at it. How does it apply for me? Yes. Then I'll lay back down just for a second. And then I just meditate on just, I love you. Yeah, I love you, and I'll go into the whole pono pono. Sometimes it just depends. It depends. It, yeah. it depends on, and so mm -hmm. sometimes it'll lead me just from "I love you" to "I'm sorry." Da 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 da. Or some, yeah. I just sit there for about another ten minutes and say, yeah. "I love you. I yeah. love you. I love you. I love you." And with that, I'll open up my and I get out of bed, and I'm like, "Okay, well, what are we doing today?" <laughs> and that's kind of how yeah. I've been doing it. Nice. I really have, and. Um, it just sets the tempo and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a junkie. I don't do a lot of TV anymore. I don't yeah. do TV at all. Yeah. I mean, if, it, if I didn't need the internet, I probably, enough. You know, if I didn't have kids, probably wouldn't even have cable, but I do, I have it just for them, yeah. but I'm doing a lot of listening to, you know, I listen with, I've got you on as a subscriber on my YouTube. Yeah. So when you put out something new, I'll, while I'm doing my hair and not like I got a lot of it, but <laughs> Anyway, while I'm doing that, I'm, you know, put makeup on, I'm listening yeah. to my audio books. So I just want to encourage people, don't look at this as like, this is going to be, like, I got to get there, I got to get there, yeah. and I'll finally, and it's going to be over. Yeah. It's not going to ever be over. Enjoy, yeah. and I think I love how Abraham Hicks says it, enjoy the journey. Yeah. Enjoy the journey, because yeah. it's a continuing journey. My therapist always says this too. She's like, Lanisa, people get so excited about the destination. When you go through something like this, it's not, you'll never get to the end. Yeah. You'll never get to the end of learning how to be a better you. Yeah. You never get to the end. Yeah. It's a continuous journey. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage people just to be patient and just to love on you. Cause I'm telling you, girl, you, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Beautiful. I'm excited. You know what I love that you said? I wake up with peace. Oh, I no alarm, you wake up with peace and you lay in bed and you spend that first bit of time directing your mind to something that's going to uplift you, that's going to take you into the day with a good feeling. Because when you wake up, I don't know, some people maybe like the alarm. Me waking up with an alarm was always offensive. Yes, always. yes. It, was, it instantly put me into a 
angry, hostile mood. <laughs> Straight yes. away. Well, for me, and I think what it did for me right now, remember, all my life, I've been validated. Everything else validated me. I had yeah. to prove myself. Yes. So me setting an alarm early meant that mm -hmm. I had to be at work early. I had to make this happen and I had to make that happen. And I had to prove to you that my existence is worthy of today. Yes. I don't yes. have to do that anymore. Oh. I just wake up and I can prove that. Yeah. I don't need to feel like I got to be somewhere on a time. No, when I wake yeah. up, this is all I need. That's I'm proved. I said, no. Yes. So Beautiful. that's kind of what it means to me. Oh, Lanisha. Lanisha. <laughs> Lanisha, I, you're I, fine. That's all right. I am just, yeah, I, this, I've waited for this. <laughs> I know you. I know, but you did. You tried to pull it out, Lisa. Can we do an interview? And I'm like, no, one year. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You're like, yes, you do. You've got some good stuff yeah. that you can share. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm not ready, girl. Yeah. I'm not ready. No, and you really. <laughs> it's almost like you've just gone whoosh down into. I, and it is, and and can I, I'm glad you brought that to point because there was a point, um, and I was talking to um, my therapist about this because that was that was kind of. I got, there was, you know, when people that know me and all my life, it's like you said, it had the highest of the highs yeah. and the lowest of the lows. Yeah. But for the first time in my life, I'm just kind of just, it just is yeah. and content. And yeah. when great things happen, like for the car example, yes. well, this is a great example to put it around this. When great, like that car in my past, I would have been like, <gasps> oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. It was like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you know what? I deserve it. Um, yeah. This is, and I, and I told her, I said, it's almost like I'm content. Yes. And I said, I used to not like that word, yes. but I love that now. <laughs> I like that word. It's yeah. like, I'm not surprised. Mm. It's like, I expect it. Yeah. I expect greatness. I expect yeah. peace. I expect yeah. love. So it doesn't surprise me when it mm -hmm. happens. Am I, am I joyful about it? I am. Yes. But I'm not, it just said it's not a surprise. And even when something crazy happens, I'm like, hmm, well, that's just part of life. Well, I'm yeah. waiting to see how that's going to turn out because it's going to turn out for my good. Hmm. Yeah. So it didn't even pull me down because yeah. it's like I, I'm living in a place I don't know if it's in. I don't know what it yeah. is, girl. I just, but it yeah. is truly that peace yes. that passes all understanding. I yeah. get it now. Yeah. And you kind of live in the middle zone, the balance yeah. zone, rather than the extreme highs and extreme yes. lows. Yeah. It's a much nicer, easy place to live in that middle zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is. Mm. And, you know, I had some, you know, I had a publisher, somebody reach out to me and said, listen, we've had people that have read your book and, we want to help you get it out a whole lot more. And I'm like, wow. I, I mean, I cried for a second and I'm yes. like, well, well, Lord, thank you. But yes. it was like, and my best friend was with me at the time. And she says, Lisa, what do you expect? Yeah. What do you expect? You, you are just so flowing. Yeah. You're flowing in your water right now. And nice. I guess I just, I just thank you. I do. Uh, God, God used you as a tool uh, to put me there. And, um, thank you. I will never take Lanisha. that lightly. We'll never thank take that you. lightly. It's look, it's been good doing that with you and, and just yes. saying, you know, the greatest thing to me is seeing someone get relief. Mm -hmm. That to me, I think, when people go from feeling pain and angst and, you know, turmoil and all that stuff, when you see them start to level out and you see the pain start to lift off and you see relief in their eyes, that to me is the yes. greatest thing. Well, girl, you got it here. Thank you. <laughs> you did that thing. Oh, beautiful. Well, before we go, have you got any, do you want to say anything final to the people? <sighs> Um, I, I think if I had anything, a message to leave them, um, I wish I had that written in my, do I have this right here? Hold yeah. on. Let me see yeah. if I can. There is something that I wrote. Yeah. And I don't know if I have it at hand. Let me see. Let me see if I can, if I have it. Yeah. No if I can find it because this was something that was, that got me. 
Uh, I don't know if I have it. Today I challenge you to start happy. Let me see. I'm looking at notes that we had from yes, you and me, yes. but there was a note that after I got, uh, after I got off the phone and hello, my be beautiful Bella, let me see it, Lanisa, let me see, let me see, hope nobody's seeing my junky house, no, my house no, is not junky, <laughs> my house is not junky, but I, I can hear my kids now when they watch this, they're going to like, mom, you are so crazy. No, you weren't running around the house looking for this. You're like, yes, I am. Yes, because I so, I so want you to hear this. Let me yeah. see what it, I wrote it in. But it was like, after we got off, after we got off the phone. Yeah. What did I write it in? Oh, well, maybe it's not, well, maybe it's not meant for me to share it. Because I usually have always, all we can always put it in the description if you can't find it. Okay. Yeah, it was just a little quote, but at the end of the day, really what I want to say, and I'm gonna try because I have journals all over the place and you yeah. shouldn't see. That's what I'm going through. I'm 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 a writer. I believe that you write things down and yeah. you allow it to happen. Yeah. So let me let me look at one more thing. Let me see if I have one more thing that it may have been in that I had it. I could have sworn I wrote it in this book. Let me flip this book over. Uh, I think this is my trading stuff. Okay, well, at the end of the day, I don't see it. But <laughs> I don't see it. But I think the biggest thing I want people to get and to remember is that it really does start with you. It yeah. really does. I know you don't want to hear it. I know it, me it doesn't mean... <sighs> Yeah. I know you want that person back. Mm. I know you want that job. I know you want more money. Um, yeah. I know you, I mean, all the little things I know, I know. Mm. I, I've been around, I've done it. I probably have had every experience and everybody that's listening. You probably can't see anything that surprised me. I've really gone through more than what people could ever imagine that I've gone through. But I will tell you this, the thing that gave me the peace this piece is finally loving me yeah. and knowing what that means and what that looks like. And please take the time. Please take the time. Let me say it one more time. Please yeah. take the time to find and discover who you are. And the minute you find and discover who you are, yeah. trust me, everything else is going to come get in place. Yeah. When you understand the God in you and what you are as the God in you, mm. it's, gonna, it's just like, and the last analogy I kind of want to leave you with, we have a glass of ice and let's just put, um, let's say God is water. God is water. And we throw the ice in there, which were made in his image. So you can look at this glass and you see ice and you see water, but in, eventually that ice is going to melt. And once that ice melts, you don't know what is what. Yeah. Well, you got to remember that. If you're really made up in his image, and if we really think that everything around us has power, has abundance, has wealth, has everything, then guess what? You do too. You don't need any person, place, or thing to validate who you are as a person. The mere fact that you're living you're a person. You're validated. You're worthy. You're special. You can have everything you want. And the minute you understand that and walk in it, it's the day you're going to have freedom. Mm. So, so that's Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where we sing hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and the church says amen. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Nice words <laughs> nice to finish on. Absolutely beautiful words. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Lanisa, yes. Lanisa, you say goodbye too, but hang on because we'll all stop the recording and you and I can have a chat for a minute. Okay. 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 Well, guys, bye. goodbye. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh.